Hi, my name is Madeline Smith and my student number is N9112944. The topic that I've chosen today is expanded roles in paramedicine and the future of the profession in Australia. Within the Queensland Ambulance Service and other state ambulance services in Australia, we're seeing a broadening and expansion of scope of practice for both advanced care and critical care paramedics. These changes are happening primarily in response to the changes in the nature and demographic of call-outs and also advances in care, equipment and drugs in the management of particular patient groups. Whilst these expanded scopes of practice are providing new opportunities within existing services, there is another major change on the horizon when it comes to the role of the paramedic in Australia, national registration. National registration may represent the potential for an entirely new range of career opportunities and roles that paramedics may work in and may open up new spaces within the health industry that are best filled by pre-hospital clinicians such as paramedics. These are another kind of expanded role that Australia will most likely need to consider embracing as we currently have high numbers of university graduates with limited employers, primarily state ambulance services and a small select number of private providers within industries such as mining and retrieval services. In this presentation, I've chosen to discuss the changing role of the paramedic within the current Queensland Ambulance Service, including the addition of the High Acuity Response Unit, the Low Acuity Response Unit and Extended Competencies for ACPs, and how this reflects on the changing role and relationship of the paramedic to the community. I will also discuss the variety of roles that paramedics now fill internationally in countries that have introduced or long practiced national registration in an attempt to consider the potential for future roles of paramedics and how they may apply in Australia in the wake of national registration. The Low Acuity Response Unit within the Queensland Ambulance Service has been developed in response to the ever-increasing number of emergency calls for illnesses and injuries that could be managed by a non-emergency response or even a GP in an attempt to reduce the workload and demand on acute crews and also on emergency departments. This program is already in place in Brisbane, the Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, Townsville and Cairns and will continue to develop in additional locations in the state in response to this increasing demand. The LaRue response has been ta tailored to address and assess problems that do not necessitate an emergency or time critical response and the officers are trained in a wider range of assessment skills as well as having the ability to refer patients on to GPs or other support services instead of requiring the transport to emergency departments for further assessment. Conversely, the High Acuity Response Unit, or HARU, located on the Gold Coast and in Brisbane, has been instituted to respond to critically injured trauma patients, in addition to the traditional acute and critical care responses. This unit is operated by specially trained critical care paramedics providing additional interventions such as rapid sequence intubation, blood products, fast scan, and has the ability to provide red blanket referrals, which means that the patient bypasses the emergency department and goes straight into trauma surgery in certain circumstances. The development of this unit demonstrates the advancements in the care of this select patient group that is associated with improved patient outcomes and also indicates a greater collaborative approach between pre-hospital and tertiary facilities in expediting the assessment and management of these critically ill patients. Advanced care paramedics can also complete extended competencies such as decision supported fibrinolysis in order to extend their individual scope of practice. This allows them to better respond to a wider variety of patients independently as demand on critical care paramedics increases as well as their limited availability outside of metropolitan and large regional areas. With the introduction of national registration in Australia and the large volumes of university graduates, over the coming years we may see a diversification and privatisation of the role of the paramedic within Australia. A few roles that have been created and are developing within other countries after the registration of paramedics include rural paramedics, paramedic practitioners and community and industry based paramedics. The development of the paramedic practitioner role within the UK, sometimes known as the emergency care practitioner, is currently still ongoing. However, there are multiple positions and qualifications that have been tailored and targeted to these specific roles. This role utilises the clinical skills and judgement of a paramedic in the management of the public and primary health space, with a focus on a space that may have been traditionally filled by a general practitioner or a practice nurse. 
This role seems to have been developed initially to compensate for shortfalls in doctors' numbers and may represent a similar space to that which is currently being filled by after-hours GPs and LaRue officers within Queensland, as well as practice nurses at GPs during business hours. Their primary focus is around the assessment and management of minor injury and illness and the reduction of unnecessary hospital presentations. The scope of practice varies widely across the UK and Scotland, as does the training involved, but many practitioners have additional abilities in ordering further investigations, such as imaging and pathology, and administering a range of common medications, as well as utilising referral pathways to reduce the number of patients presenting to emergency departments for care that could have been provided in an alternative way. These practitioners are also being used in roles such as those traditionally occupied by school nurses, which makes sense in responding not only to low acuity needs such as headache or nausea, but also high acuity needs such as fractures on the playground. Currently, in Australia, uh, due to the lack of positions within state ambulance service and the lack of scope of practice in the private or community space, there are extremely limited opportunities for practice that accommodate double degree students in using both facets of their skills as a nurse and as a paramedic. The design of graduate programs with work in both clinical spaces has been met in the past with significant resistance and barriers to application, currently forcing most graduates to choose one profession or another. The development of roles such as the paramedic practitioner or community-based paramedics may open the doors to opportunities for the progression and maintenance of both nursing and paramedic registration and experience, as this combination of skills may position graduates even more suitably to roles than single degree students. Community-based paramedics uh, have also been utilised in providing assessment and health education programs in high call-out areas. This has been touted as a possible solution to reduce overall call-out rates and improve cardiovascular and diabetes risk factor outcomes. A pilot program in Canada demonstrated this and was staffed by officers on light duties providing weekly one-to-one -one visits with these patients. This may represent an appropriate role for officers in a similar situation within the state ambulance service or it may represent a suitable private or support role facilitated by the government as part of a public health campaign. This role might also be more suitable for, patients with, uh, for paramedics with small children or paramedics moving towards retirement. Whilst rural and regional paramedics have recently seen extensions of their scope, such as the introduction of decision-supported fibrinolysis within Queensland, there are still additional and diverse roles within the regional and rural health space that may be best filled by paramedics and pre-hospital practitioners. These areas could utilise paramedics in primary healthcare outreach and community-based public health roles in similar or expanded roles to those of rural nurses or alongside existing roles, with pre-hospital practitioners playing a larger role in the triage, management um, and prevention of patient presentations, and also in communication and collaboration with key healthcare assets such as tertiary hospitals or the Royal Flying Doctors. Industry-based paramedics already have a role within the Australian healthcare industry, with employment within the mining and first aid first responder industries being available. The Royal Flying Doctors Service in Victoria, for example, employs their own ambulance attendants, which may have a degree in paramedicine. However, what can present difficulties, particularly in the mining and retrieval services, is the requirement of sometimes years of on-road experience within state ambulance services, which can be difficult to achieve both as a grad year and beyond um, in order to become eligible for these roles. With the increasing privatisation of paramedic roles within the UK, for example, there may be more room for experience acquisition across a variety of platforms, not just within state ambulance services, or there may be more positions available within state ambulance services as employees move into private or diverse positions following national registration. Ultimately, the development of these new or expanded roles is dependent to a high degree on the regulation and standardisation that national registration would bring as it would ensure that all paramedics are trained to similar levels and that registration and practice requirements are the same nationwide regardless of who your employer is and that public safety from malpractice is ensured with complaints and concerns regarding individual practitioners being addressed by a single governing body. 
So the key to this continuing expansion of roles is not only with the State Ambulance Service, but also with the national regulation of the profession.